Welcome to week number eight of the Destiny Group Mentor School. Are you ready, honey, for your... She's going to open us up with about four or five minutes, okay. ten, whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, uh, we call it Kingdom 101, but you've got, another, you've got another word for it. What is it? Your session. My session? Um, it is called Kingdom Rain. Kingdom Rain. So are you ready to yes. take notes? And here we go. The kingdom has a king, citizens, territory, and laws. Isn't that wonderful? He set it up mm -hmm. just like governments are set up all over the earth. God has the blueprint for everything on this earth mm -hmm. and how we must conduct ourselves, behave ourselves. And the main thing in the kingdom Number one thing in the kingdom is that it's ruled by love. The kingdom of God on earth is a theocracy, not a democracy. Mm. Uh, the king is sovereign. That means what he says is law. Mm. He has authority. His word is absolute. Am I going too fast? Okay. He is sovereign. He has authority. His word is absolute. He reigns over his dominion. So Jesus is the king of the kingdom. That's how God set it up. And he was called the king of the Jews when he was on earth. But in reality, he came as the lamb of God. That's his character. Even though he was the lion of the tribe of Judah, he didn't, you know, he was strong. He said he had strength and he has strength and power. So he had the ability to establish his kingdom in force. This was not the proper way of his character. See, that's God's character. His son, Jesus, has the character of God. And we, who are followers of Jesus, at some point we... We are not following anymore. We are in Christ mm -hmm. because Christ is forming us. We are also operating in that same character. That's how we reach people. That's how we reach the world. That's how we take care of the earth. That's how we uh, uh, subdue animals by yes. loving them with the love of God. The liters now. The, let me let me just frame this for uh, finishing this part. The leaders of Jesus' day, they thought that the Messiah, that's why they were kind of excited about it, but kind of not, because he was saying some things they weren't used to hearing, like we should love everybody, and they were used to just the law, you know, the letter of the law. So he came with a different message. So that they thought, though, they keep hanging on there just in case. This was really the Messiah. You know, we don't want to mess it up if this is the Messiah we're waiting for. But see, they expected him to be the Messiah and he would be great military leader who would make war with the Romans and subdue them instead of, you know, the Jews. Be, that's why they call him the king of the Jews, because they thought he was going to save them from the Roman oppression or rule. Because the Romans were pretty strong, right? Mm -hmm. We all know from history. Um, so they thought that he will establish this by force. That's why when Peter, when they were coming to get Jesus and Peter got the sword, Jesus mm -hmm. told him not to. And he even put the ear back on the centurion mm -hmm. that, 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 that he heard. So, but when he turned out to be a mere lamb, Lamb of God, who treated the Romans with respect and compassion, they turned against him. They said, oh, he's not the one. He's not the one that is going to deliver us. He's lying. He's not from God. And he's not coming to deliver us. So those, those, those few things about him tells us what kind of king he is in the kingdom of God. Wow. Good. Amen. 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 Yay. Yes, All you. right. I think it is amazing that the Lamb of God that Liz talked about became revealed as the lion in the tribe of Judah. 
he uh, <laughs> he didn't have to, you know, a lion doesn't always have to roar for you to respect him. But when he does roar, yeah. you know something's going to happen. In Matthew 5, 48, Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect. Mm -hmm. hmm. mm -hmm. So we're told by people all the time, nobody's perfect. Be ye therefore perfect, even as what? Your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. He qualifies what our perfection should look like. We've got to stop saying nobody's perfect. We may have been born in iniquity, but we were not designed in iniquity. Amen. We were designed in the image of God. Really what he's saying is be perfect as your father God is perfect because you're made in his perfect image. Be holy, as it says there in 1 Peter 1.16, be holy. How can you be holy? Well, now we're on the, through Christ and through redemption and through uh, reconciliation, we're now the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We are new creation. So, we know that we can once again rediscover, write that one down, rediscover our original blueprint. In order to become the perfect that God already says you are, the way to become, become, process, the way to become the perfect that God says you already are, we must be perfected. There's perfect and perfect. You don't start off understanding the perfect that God made you until you go through the process of perfecting it. Look at this. As we said, there's perfect defined as to be whole and complete. So you are perfect on your way to becoming acquainted with yourself. We got to always go back to the blueprint. God says you're perfect. He looked at creation and said, it is good. Man trespassed and began to reverse the cycle into a sinful nature, Jesus brought it back. So there's perfect to be whole and complete. Good means complete. It is good. Good is as good as you'll get. Of course, there's better and best, but that has nothing to do with good. <laughs> there's no gooder. <laughs> but then there's perfect. And perfect means the process of refining. Look at this. Psalm 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Mm. Yes, it is. The law or the original blueprint of the Lord is perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a plumb line. Yes, it is. That's the plumb line right there. And because it is perfect, or it is complete, it is whole, it converts the soul. Now, I'm not just talking about going to an altar and accepting Jesus, although that's part of it, okay? But, amen, that's part of it. Would you all agree? Mm -hmm. But I'm not just talking about that. He's talking about it continues the process of converting your thinking. Mm -hmm. Changing changing your mind from a sin consciousness into a righteousness consciousness. You ever notice that righteousness is called justification? 
Justified means you are in line with the plum. Yeah, we're coming. Righteous means you are lined up to the original blueprint. That's why it's not by the works you do, but it's by the work he did to restore us back to who we are that will produce a performance. As new creations, we are in the process of restoration of God's image. Holy equals these three things. He says, be holy as I am holy. How can I do that? See how far below we think we are? Mm -hmm. How can I do that? You've got a poor opinion of who you really are. And it may not be your fault. It might be society. Who knows? But you're going to change it. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Holy. Be holy as I am holy. What does that mean? We set our sights. We get set right. And we're set in his might. Holy means set apart. Mm. Set apart from what? From everything that was holding us back. From seeing who we really are in him. Isaiah 58 and 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build old waste places. Everything sin disfigured. God is restoring it back to the original blueprint. And uh, thou shalt raise up the foundations that look like they were lost, but they've always been there mm -hmm. of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach between heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. The restorer of DNA or the paths to dwell in the original blueprint. So let me just put it simply this way. We are not bad trying to get good. We are originating, originated in the good mm -hmm. that sin entered and caused us to be covered up with bad. Mm -hmm. And Jesus just restored us back to the good. Amen. Yes. Yes. This is good tonight. Yes. No longer are we conform, conform, but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind, converting of our soul to prove what is that good and acceptable. And do you notice it starts with good? <laughs> so God starts with the end result and works back. Prove what is that good. Therefore, I'll know what's acceptable so that I can perfect to it. Will of God. I should have wrote that, written that down, but I, I think it's Romans chapter 12. Yes, it is. Romans 12, 2. Mm -hmm. Got to put on my specs. Mm -hmm. I'll spec. Mm -hmm. Ephesians. Oh, he's <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. And I, I want to just kind of wind up with this tonight. This is so important. And many of you might, when you start hearing me say this, some of you might say, oh yeah, I know that scripture. But hang on. This is, we're talking about pressing into perfection. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to build a religious organization. No, no. For the perfecting, perfecting, the perfecting of perfect saints. <laughs> For the perfecting of the saints. Saints is always mature. For the, for, for the perfecting of mature saints. For the work of their ministry. Whether that be in the church or that be out in the world. Because not everybody's called to work inside the church building. But it says here. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Unto the measure. Here's how you know that you are really measuring up. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. <laughs> wow. 
That's my plumb line. Not as though I had already attained. Either we're already perfect. You say, wait a minute, Dr. Rick. We just said, Jesus said we're already perfect. But we haven't been perfected fully. That's what Paul's meaning. Either am I already fully perfected is what he meant. But I follow after that. And I may apprehend that for which I am already apprehended. Something's got a hold of me. Yes, it's God. That's right. And I want to apprehend or get to understand yes, what it is yes. that apprehended me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a reason why you didn't give up. And you're still here. Yes. Amen. Your passion, as we said last week, is greater than your pain. You know, when I went to the movies as a little boy, there are certain movies I remember. I don't know why. This will probably sound very unspiritual, but okay. <laughs> here we go. I went and saw, I can't even remember, some of you may know, if you're like an older person. <laughs> this movie, Frank Sinatra was in it. And I didn't, you know, I, I was just like seven maybe. And Frank Sinatra was sitting with a kid and at the, as part of the movie, they st the kid was all upset because he wasn't able to achieve, you know, the success he wanted to achieve or something. And so, of course, they always break into song back in the day, yeah. right? And so Frank Sinatra, he just says, just what makes that little old ant think he can move a rubber tree plant? Anyone knows that ant can't move a rubber tree plant, but he has high hopes. He has high hopes. He has high apple pie in the Scott Holmes. I think that's all I remember. <laughs> Aren't you glad you tuned into class tonight and got these deep spiritual truths? No, seriously. And I remember thinking as a little boy sitting in the drive-in theater. That's when they had drive-in theaters. And Frank Sinatra was singing that to the kid. And the kid was like, yeah, you know, I can do it. <laughs> I remember thinking what I felt inside. I'm thinking, you know, yeah, who says you can't? And I didn't think of it in terms of all the depth that we're going into, but something perfect in me says, I can. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can move a rubber tree plant. <laughs> Some of you are going to say, Dr. Rick has lost his mind. All right. But this is what we need to understand. There are things God is going to have you do. You never dreamed you could do. Mm -hmm. There are things God's going to have you say you never dreamed you could say. He's going to take you into places you never dreamed you could go. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen and surprise you. Oh, yeah. But yeah. something's going to tell you inside, didn't I always know this? Yes, that's right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because something's apprehended me. Even at that movie Drive-in movie theater and Frank Sinatra yeah, singing and there's nothing spiritual about all that. But, but God it. gave me a spiritual experience because right. something apprehended me and it was God at that early age that said, I, he, some, somehow he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or yeah. think. And I felt it inside here. Mm -hmm. The stature comes, if you want to write this down, I didn't put this on the page. Stature comes from where we get our word statue. Stature is where we get our word statue. And also where we get the word statute or ordinances or order. So the stature you and I have is kind of like God has made us unmovable, like a statue. God has given you a stature and you're growing into it and less and less of the temporal things bother you and more and more you see who you are in Christ to stand and having done all to stand, stand. So this is why he says, something's apprehended me and I want to apprehend what's apprehended me. I press, I'm pressing into perfection. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
So he's pressing. Are you pressing? Yes. Toward a mark. For the prize. The mark is perfection. The mark is the blueprint. I'm pressing into becoming all that God says I am before I can see it. I press toward the mark. Now get this. Notice what it says there in scripture. It says I'm pressing for the mark of the prize where? In Christ Jesus. So what is it that's in Christ Jesus that I consider a prize? Are you ready for this? It's me. It's you. The prize is finally discovering who I am in him. Woohoo! Yeah, sure. yeah. And I'm it? telling you, no matter how much you think you're ready for it, <laughs> every step you're going to be surprised. Pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God yeah. in Christ Jesus. Of course he's a prize, but that's not what he says here. He says, I'm pressing toward the prize that's in him and what's in him you are in him and the discovery of who you are in him and nobody has fully arrived yet perfection is applied to our character before it develops our talent and our plans perfection is always applied to your character before it's applied to your talent or your plans uh, that's it for tonight and uh, i hope you've enjoyed this tonight i'm talking to perfect people Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm talking to perfect. I'm talking to you. <laughs> and until next time, to the king. To the king.